Welcome to a new NoCo tutorial for NoCo HQ. And today we'll be building um, a cryptocurrency uh, pricing web app um, using Bubble as well as an external API. In this case, we're going to use the CoinGecko API, which is a great API which you can fetch various information about cryptocurrencies and uh, you can use the API for free and you don't even need an API key. So this tutorial should first of all show you that you can easily import all kinds of external data using an API and Bubbles API connector and um, basically without writing a single line of code you will have to know a bit about APIs but I think that shouldn't be um, too hard. So what you want to do you just want to create an account with Bubble or log in if you have one already and click on create a new app and I'm going to just name this app uh, Crypto Price no code HQ and I want to click on create a new app and we'll be brought into our bubble app editor. Okay, great. So the first thing I'm just gonna do, I'm actually gonna start with a blank page, close the application assistant. Let's continue by decreasing the width just so that we can better work with this application like this. Um, let me actually, let's make it a, a, like a kind of dark mode kind of app. So I'm going to change the background style to a black color and let's just add a title here at the top, a text. And let's say this text should say um, find or get the newest newest crypto currency prices. And let's center that whole text, make it white and bold and let, let's make it a lot bigger. And we have a great title here at the top. Okay, and we're going to keep this app quite simple. So um, all I want to do, I just want to add a drop down here uh, where users can look and search for uh, the cryptocurrency they want to get the price for and then just click on a button which says search and uh, will then be brought to the search page basically and we're going to keep it really simple and minimalistic so i'm just going to uh, search for a drop down i'm going to insert that drop down here to make it actually quite big let's center that and let's change the style so let's click on remove style and let's actually change this whole thing um let's change the font time to arial so it's the same as the title um, let's make it bigger, the font size, like this. Um, let's remove the background style. Let's make the placeholder color white. Um, let's make it bold as well. Let's actually make that white here as well. And let's make that bold. Um, and now let's say, okay, for the border style, we actually want to remove that. We want to define each border independently. And we only want to have a border at the bottom. So let's remove the border at the top. Um, the one at the right and the one at the left. So we just now have this field here at the bottom and let's remove this Radius here. We don't need that and let's make the border white as well and a bit bigger and now we have quite a nice Field here which says choose an option currently and it's actually a drop down and one more thing I want to change is the um, Yeah, it looks quite good. Okay, so now we have our drop down here and here user should be able to uh, select a cryptocurrency for which he wants to get a price data and below, below that this just have a let's have a button and this button should also be white so let's have um, background style none and let's have a solid border with white color and no corner radius and uh, let's remove oh, let's remove all these things here and this button should say search and let's make that bigger and now we have quite a simple minimalistic looking page let's just quickly preview there and see how it looks and as you can see we just have our get new cryptocurrency prices our drop down small thing if it's hovered it changed the style but we're going to change that and our search button here so let's go back actually uh, let's just go to conditional remove these two conditionals we don't need that and for the button let's also add a conditional let's remove all that and let's say when this button is hovered uh, we just want to change the text and make it bold just so users can see they're hovering it. So let's just take a look at that now. And the hovering effect is gone here. And now, okay, that's not really visible. Let's actually change that. Let's make it underline. Oops. 
like this. And I, now I think it's um, better UI design. So let's just check the app. It looks good. Okay, great. Um, next, actually, we're going to go ahead and connect um, our external API. So let me actually apply maximum width here. I think that's better as well of 100%. Okay. And we're going to populate the data within this drop down using an external API. And as I mentioned already, we're going to use the CoinGecko API. So, what you want to do, you just want to search for CoinGecko API and you'll be brought to the documentation page, which looks similar to this. And this documentation page is quite simple. You can test all out, out all these endpoints here, and you don't need an API key. You can just click on one, take a look at um, what is required, and just try it out here. And um, yeah, so what we're going to need for populating our dropdown is going to be the coins list, because this will list all the supported coin IDs, the name and the symbol of our coins. So let's go back to uh, our app. And let's go to plugins and what you want to do, you want to add a plugin and you want to search for the so-called API connector. Okay, let's install that. And what we can do here, we can add external APIs from uh, other sources to our bubble apps. So let's add another API, let's call this, this crypto. And let's add um, a new call and we're going to call this API call um, get list of cryptocurrencies. Okay, and this is going to be quite simple. We're just going to head back to CoinGecko and we're going to click here, coins list, expand that. Let's click on try it out, execute. And as you can see, it shows us with all this weird stuff here, which you don't need, um, just basically the URL endpoint of the API. So if I'm just going to copy this and let me actually just um, go back to a bubble app and let's just paste that here and that should be it already. Just entering this endpoint as a GET request because we want to get data will list us all the coins. Okay, so let's just initialize the call, and as you can see, uh, we get a return values, which is a list of cryptocurrencies, and it consists of an ID, a symbol, and a name. And we're getting a huge ton of data of all the cryptocurrencies that we can use within our app. So let's just click save, and now we already have access to this external API. Was incredibly simple. It literally took less than a minute. And what we can do now, we can go back to design and we can say, okay, the choices of this dropdown should be dynamic. They should be of type get list of cryptocurrencies. The choices source should be get data from an external API. Now we have access to our crypto API and the option should just be the current options name. Because we get returned the ID, the symbol and the name of the cryptocurrency, we just want to use the names. Let's just click preview now. And what should happen now? Um, it says loading, so currently the data is being loaded because it's quite a huge request. Uh, I think there's more than 1,000 cryptocurrencies being fetched. So that will take a few seconds, and now you can see it's done. If we can click on the drop down, you can see we have uh, access to all the cryptocurrencies, and you can even search and just enter the, the letters. So let's search for Ethereum. Ethereum is here, and we basically have all the cryptocurrencies fetched from an external source, and users can just choose them, enter them, and they will be displayed. Here, so that works really nicely. Um, also, let's search for Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin should be somewhere here. Bitcoin, where is it? Okay, great. And we have basically access to all these um, cryptocurrencies. So let me actually go back. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna wrap all of these um, in a group, okay? Let's remove the style of this group. Okay, everything of this, and now they're a group, and let's just call this group main. Okay, and that's already it for now. What I'm gonna do instead of creating various pages, I want to keep this whole thing a single application. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make this element not visible on page load, but not because we want to do that, just because it's gonna make things easier now for editing. So, I'm gonna hide this group, and I'm just gonna add a new group, and this group should be. Called, let's call it crypto or results, crypto results. Okay, let's also remove the style again of this. And this group will basically display the price and other any other kind of data we want for this cryptocurrency. So let's go back to uh, our CoinGecko API and the API endpoint we're going to use to fetch data for a given coin is going to be the coin's ID. So we want to get the current data, which is name, price, market, inclu including exchange takers, uh, etc for a coin and again we can use this parameter here 
And again, we can use this uh, nice uh, endpoint here, just try it out. Only thing is we need a required parameter. In this case, we will need the ID. Okay, so we need the ID um, of the cryptocurrency, of course, for which we want to get data. So let's just click try out. Let's enter the ID of a coin. So for example, um, um, Bitcoin. Let's just uh, fetch some data. Let's click execute. And again, we are returned all these amazing results here from CoinGecko. And we can just copy this call here again. Let's just copy this. Go back to our bubble application under plugins. You want to create a new call. And I'm going to call this call um, get crypto detailed data. Okay. Let's just paste that URL here. And the only thing now is this here should be variable, of course, because we don't always want to fetch the Bitcoin data. So you can use square brackets. Um, so let me just enter that and enter here the cryptocurrency. So this is basically now a variable which we can uh, always access um, using this parameter here. Let's uncheck that box. And yeah, that's basically it. Let's just enter a value here for testing purposes. So I'm again going to enter Bitcoin. Let's click initialize call. And again, Bubble will return us all the data here, the ID, the symbol, the name, the asset platform, and so on, all this stuff. So let's just actually click um, Save here, okay? And we should now have access to this API as well. And I'm going to actually go back here to design. I'm going to say, okay, the crypto results should be of type of content. Type get crypto detailed date, okay? And if we, we have now basically access to this data. So I can uh, insert... Um, text here and I can say okay parent groups get crypto um, name so showing results for this okay whatever this is so let's um, place that here so this will show us for what we're getting the results let's make it a lot bigger actually like this okay let's center that here as well okay and let's just quickly before adding more let's just test if that works so let me hide this page here okay Let's go to our main page. Let's make that visible again. Okay. And let's say, okay, when this button search is clicked, we want to, first of all, hide our group main. We want to show our group um, uh, crypto results. Okay. And we want to display data in this crypto results. And the data to display should be get data from an external API, get crypto detailed data, and the cryptocurrency for which we want to get the data should be whatever the drop down ace value ID is. Okay? So let me just explain. We're fetching all the cryptocurrencies' uh, IDs here in this drop down. A user can choose a cryptocurrency, press on search. When search is pressed, the main group is hidden. Our group crypto results will be shown. And in this group, we'll display data using the API I just connected. And the data will be displayed for the cryptocurrency, which was chosen in the dropdown ace value. Okay, so let's just quickly test it, actually. Let's refresh this whole page. And let's now um, wait again until the cryptocurrencies are loaded. Um, and let's select um, and let's select Bitcoin now. So I'm going to search for Bitcoin again. Okay, and let's just click search now. Okay, great. So uh, we don't see anything here right now, but this already shows me it works because it's saying showing results for Bitcoin. The data was successfully sent over, and we can now have access to all the data for Bitcoin using CoinGecko. So the rest is going to be quite simple. I'm just going to go back to Design here, I'm going to show the crypto results page. Let's actually hide this again so it's going to be easier to edit. And for the crypto results, we now have access to all the data. So let's add um, a text field here, and this text field should say parent groups. Um, let's say what else, what, what do you want? Localization, description, links, um, image, market cap, coin gecko, and there's so much data you can access. Um, Let's use the market data current price in euro actually. Okay, so let's say this is the let me actually current price in euro. Okay, this will display the current price in euro. And let me add a space here again. Let's make that white and bigger like this. Let's center that and it should 
be also like this center that let's just copy this text let's have another text here and this should display um, let's say um, I don't know there's so much we can fetch market data change uh, date you can basically decide what you want to display in your app maybe market cap that's nice so let's show the market cap so how much all the cryptocurrencies are worth together again in euros so market cap in euro okay let's maybe display image here as well because we are given the image data let's just drag an image here it should be a dynamic image and we can insert it should be again get crypto data and it should be the um the image uh large maybe okay and let's just center that let's take a look now how that lo looks if that works everything so let's just refresh the page Oh, I forgot to make the main page visible, so let me go to main and just make that visible on page load, and let's just refresh the page here again. Okay, again, I can choose in cryptocurrencies. Let's actually choose Ethereum this time. Um, and not this one, the other one, Ethereum. Okay, and let's click search now. And it's loading currently, and now it's showing results for Ethereum. We have the current price in euro. We have the market cap in euro, which is... We can format that later and we have the image as well that works perfectly nice nicely so um, we have access to all that data and we have a beautifully um, and sleek uh, app that shows data for these cryptocurrencies so again you can add even more things if you want let's just make, hide that again so let's actually um, format this value here so the euro market cap in euro let's just have that market cap your data market cap um, euro formatted as currency okay currency is euro great let's drag the image down and you can add even more data if you want to do that um, so let's just search for what we can use we can use the current groups market data so you have access to id and all that stuff let's take a look here if you want you can use also a description let's use the english description you can add that um, description like this okay let's just center that here again add a thing here and let's also just add a text here which says using this app uses the coin gecko api center that and make that white and let's just refresh our app again And I have to make this visible again. I always forget that. Let's make that visible here. And let's refresh again. Okay, and let's this time choose something else. Let's maybe use Ripple. XRP, I think it's called. Let's click search. And it's loading again. And now it's showing results for XRP. The current price in euro is um, 0 0.2 euros. The market cap is, um, that looks like 9 billion. And we have a nice description, which is also fetched from CoinGecko, um, as well as the image. In this case, uh, I don't know if you see that, but the image is also black, so that doesn't work here. But you could add a white background to the image only. Uh, let's take a look. Yeah, the image is black. But yeah, you get the idea. Um, basically, you have access to all the cryptocurrency data, and we have created our own cryptocurrency price app without code in less than 30 minutes. And that's basically it regarding this tutorial. You could, of course, go ahead and heavily modify this app um, and add more features. And you can see under the CoinGecko API which data you have access to. There's a lot of stuff, uh, historical data, crypto events, derivatives, uh, the different platforms for trading, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, I hope you learned something in this tutorial. And I'm going to see you guys for the next tutorial with NoCoHQ. Bye.